God, you. I don't know what your day has been. I don't know what's been happening during the course of your day. What I'm telling you is God bless you. God bless Amen. everyone. Glory to God. Glory to God. It is a beautiful day. Beautiful day. And um, for some reason, I'm getting a little bit of echo of me, um, Samir. I don't know what I have to do to take me out of that because I'm hearing the echo. But as you <laughs> were um, being a part of what we were doing, and we thank God for those of you who said, hey, it's my year to be okay. So I am going to um, make sure that I start my year off right by starting my first month off right and making sure that I do everything that I need to do. The tragedy, unfortunately, beloved, is that many of us will start the year off right and start the first month off right by starting the first couple of weeks off right. And as soon as those weeks are gone, we fall back into our old way of thinking, our old way of talking, all the stuff we used to watch, all the things we used to say, we fall right back into, and as I've shared with you before, according to Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 through 45, Matthew 12, verse 43 through 45, that when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking rest. And when he can't find any, he says, I'm going back to the place I came out of. And that's why you have to know, as I sent out the uh, missive a few weeks ago, is that there's going to always be a return attack by the adversary to see if you really believed what you were setting aside for, or if you were just doing it and doing it for the formality. You know, um, my father in the Lord says it this way. He says that if all you do is stop eating the food, but you don't pray, you don't do all of the other things. He said, that may be a diet, which is good, but that's not going to give you any spiritual power. And I'm going to ask those of you who have your phones, um, unmuted. Doing it, talking everything. I can hear that. So I'm asking you to please make sure that you mute your phones. I'm not going to be asking you to respond to me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be asking you to just kind of listen and go down this with me. Mm -hmm. So why don't we just go ahead and get started right away. Let's go on to begin to praise God. Father, we bless your name. We magnify you. Father, we thank you for another day. We receive your blessing. We receive your grace. We receive your anointing. We receive your favor. And Father, you did not call for us to do this because we have not that. You did not call for us to do this because we did not partake of the beauty. But you called for us to do this so that you could do something specifically for each one of us. Specifically, this is not a general gathering. You are doing something specifically for each one of us. And I thank you, Lord God, that you are going to point some things out that will set us on course to have great things happening for us, not just this year, but this month and the next month and the month to come. Now, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We serve notice on the devil that we are already more than conquerors. We don't say it because it is a scripture. We say it because we believe it. And we stand firm in your word. And we thank you that each person that comes on tonight is going to purpose to do better, to be better, to live better, and to stand in your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Everyone said amen, amen and amen. Come on, clap your hands right where you are at your home. And give God a praise. Give him all of the glory. And give him all of the honor. Now, I know that some would be asking, even as I was asking, Asking God uh -huh. when He asked me to um, do this segment, uh -huh. because go, Pastor, we're going to be taking communion again on this coming Wednesday, just two days from now. Right, right. So, why would God call for us to have this segment and this season? I hope I'm not too crooked. Why would He call for us to have this segment yes. and this season mm -hmm. when we're going to be taking communion again, ushering in yes. the month of February? Right, right. And it is because the communion that we take for the month of February is the general one that everyone, whether they are on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever platform they are on, mm -hmm. they can be a part of that. 
Mm -hmm. But everyone that's doing that communion on Wednesday did not do the fast and the communion and the consecration that we did yes. as a ministry. Yes, yes. And therefore, God has some specific things mm -hmm. that he wants to do specifically uh -huh. with those who were participants mm -hmm. in this consecration, this fast, yes. this season mm -hmm. that we set ourselves aside uh -huh. for the Lord to minister to us as a ministry. And those who have submitted to this teaching have decided, yes, Lord, I'm going to sit under the anointing that you have placed on Brother Sturdivant. I am going to hear mm -hmm. what he says as if he is my spiritual father, as if he's my personal prayer prophet, as if he's the one that speaks into my life that I get direction from mm -hmm. before I make decisions. Mm -hmm. The same way that I sit under my father mm -hmm. and my father's teachings and I go to him and I'm going over to him and I'm on my way back there again. And I listen to him and I don't make decisions unless they line up with the teachings mm -hmm. that he has given to me. Mm -hmm. I know many people say, you know, I, all churches are the same. All preachers are the same. But the Bible says you have many teachers, yeah. but you only have one father. Mm -hmm. You only have one person that has birthed you into this arena that you are walking in called your Christian faith. And I am very much aware that my assignment has been in many people's lives, I was not the father of them. I may have been one who watered them, but somebody else planted them, or I may have planted them and somebody else watered them. Because yes. you remember Paul says, one plants, another waters, but who gives the increase? God gives the increase. And so I was sharing the other day, I was at a um, homegoing celebration of a young man I grew up with, and I was talking with the, the, the eulogist, and that's a friend of mine, Dr. Jerome Bell, and um, we were talking and I said, there are many people that call me father, but there are not many people that I call my children. Mm -hmm. See, that's a different thing. See, co-pastor and I have a lot of people that say, oh, you're my spiritual mother, you're my spiritual father. Mm -hmm. And they say that as long as it's convenient. Mm -hmm. But the moment that we challenge them, the moment that we say, you can't go down this path, the moment that we say, this is not the season for you to move and to do this, then suddenly they have to find another mother or another father because they're looking for someone who will co-sign the decisions that they're going to make as opposed to someone that's going to help them to make decisions. Mm -hmm. I've even said that sometimes with co-pastor, you know, I've said it with her, I've said it with my children sometimes mm -hmm. because they will come and they'll say, here's what I'm going to do. What do you think? Well, if you already say this is what you're going to do, mm -hmm. you're not asking for my direction. You are now just looking for me to rubber stamp what you have already decided. Before we make decisions, it's the one who speaks into our lives that we ask, which way should we go? Mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to go to Ghana not too long ago, mm -hmm. and um, they wanted me to come for the month of November. Mm -hmm. And I'd already talked with my wife, and she didn't mind me missing Thanksgiving, even though she did mind me missing Thanksgiving. She knows my call to ministry mm -hmm. and that I would be missing my birthday and all those types of things. But before I accepted it, I'm asking someone to please mute your phones, mute your phones. Um, be before I accepted, I talked with my father and I said to him, Daddy, should I accept this engagement? Mm -hmm. And there was no response for a while. And then finally he said, you can go. Mm -hmm. Now that's the difference between, yes, go ahead. Right. He said, you can go. Mm -hmm. Well, the fact that it took him a while to get back to me, mm -hmm. and then his response was not affirmative, like God be with you, or the Lord is going to bless you, or whatever. I, I just told him, um, I called the pastor back, big time pastor, big time bishop, and I said mm -hmm. his name, you all would know him. Mm -hmm. And I just said, I'm sorry, I can't make this one this time. And I called daddy back, and I told him, daddy, I told him that I could not make it this time. And daddy said, Amen. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes your father, your mother, your spiritual father, your spiritual mother will allow you to have to look at everything they've taught you. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. everything they've shared with you. And then they will let you try to make the decision to see how well you learned Mm -hmm. from the pop quiz, from the exam, Mm -hmm. from the test. Mm -hmm. They want to see, have you learned anything or are you going to chase opportunity or appetites that you may have? Mm -hmm. And he said, amen. Mm -hmm. And then guess what he did in that December? Mm -hmm. And I came that December, he put me on the evening service on a Friday night, which was the high night. And he said, more people need to hear you. Mm -hmm. For the platform that he did not let me go to, he opened up another platform that was bigger than the congregation. Don't miss what I said. He gave me a platform that was bigger than the congregation I was going to. In that congregation, they may have had as many people in that congregation as we have, co-pastor, in our choir. Because, you know, the choir is 10,000 strong. Well, it wasn't that many in the congregation. But he wanted to see, was I more concerned about an opportunity or about being obedient? And many times we're thinking, I'm not going to have this chance again. And we will jump at an opportunity and we'll miss what was the test of obedience. I'm talking to somebody right now because you got the opportunity, but you've missed a bigger something. And you're watching somebody else enjoying walking in, living in, married to, working with, driving what you know you would ask God for yourself. Because when you had the opportunity, you took the opportunity as opposed to being obedient. I could have used the opportunity. Um, I live by faith. I don't get any salary. I preach it. If someone gives me something, that's it. So that would have sounded like a great opportunity to get some funds, but being obedient to my father was more important than the opportunity. And I'm talking to someone right now because what you're going to find this year is that you're going to have some opportunities, but you're going to have to weigh them against what you have been taught. Amen. co Pastor, I was very specific when we were coming to this point because um, I, I shared that if you had not done this, if you had not done that, to not just jump into it. But I was talking with Cody the other day and I said, what I'm not going to do is ask every person, did you do this? Did you do that? Did you give this? Did you give that? Um, what did you eat? What did you not eat? What category did you fall into? I was not going to do that because I'm working from a perspective of integrity. Mm -hmm. And you can lie to me or not tell the whole truth, but you can't lie to the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. You cannot lie to the Almighty God. And you may say, well, I just want to jump in on this and get this. But that may be your desire, but it's not a good thing. I sent you out on one of the misses that said you can sometimes get flies in the apothecary or in the ointment, and it will give off a foul odor, Mm -hmm. meaning that you'll wind up. And that's why I always say, read the misses. Don't just say, I got it. Read it. Because you can sometimes be doing what looks like a good thing but not following what were the guidelines. That's right. I said, you can be doing a good thing, but not following the guidelines. Co-pastor, um, I, I, I'm, I'm very much aware that the reason why God has me doing this at this particular season mm-hmm. with each one of you is because you are no longer going to be the ones that are looking for breakthroughs. Come on looking for miracles, yes. looking for the Lord to do something for you. Mm-hmm. This fast, this consecration, the season of double, double. Mm-hmm. It is because God has given you what you have needed to make it from where you were to get here like he did Elijah. Yeah. But then he gave Elijah another portion for where he was going. Mm-hmm. So God has already kept you from where you've come from. This that you are doing tonight Mm -hmm. is preparing you for where you are 
go away. Amen. I wish you would go again and just tell someone. I don't know if there's anybody near you. If you're by yourself, put your hand on your own bosom and say, hey, 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 hey. Self, yeah. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I just have to start to step in. I have to start stepping. I've got to start to step in. Yes. Why did I say that? This one is yes. not on yours, but you hear what I'm saying. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, mm -hmm. verse 5 and 6, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6, co-pastor, it speaks this way. It says, mm -hmm. and also if anyone competes in athletics, uh -huh. he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Paul writes this and he says, you can run the entire race. Mm -hmm. Cross the finish line first mm -hmm. and not get the award because you did not compete according mm -hmm. to the rules. And then it says something in verse number six. It says, the hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. You know, Co-Pastor, I was talking to God in prayer. And um, I got up after I'd been praying and went to the gym. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to him because I'm saying, Lord, you know, I've been asking for so much stuff and hasn't nothing happened and what's going on and how come my breakthroughs haven't come and why am I praying? Uh -huh. I know I'm supposed to be the first partaker. I'm supposed to be right. the first partaker. That's right. what your word says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. I'm, I'm, I've been doing all of the sowing. I'm supposed to be first. Right, right. And here's what God said. He said, do you remember your prayers? Uh -huh. I said, God, I've been praying a lot of prayers. Right. Yeah. And God said, yeah, but you pray. I will be blessed when my people are blessed. Uh, uh, okay. I said, wait a minute. Wow. He said, you've delayed mm. your own answers to prayer because you wanted your people people to be blessed right. so i blessed your people i said but god i didn't get anything from it he said you didn't ask for that ah. you said i will be blessed when my people are blessed mm -hmm. he says you're supposed to be the first partaker. You have spent your entire life giving all of your offerings to your ministry. You've spent your entire life out of your own pocket taking care of everybody else. You've spent your entire life praying for everybody else to get healed, <clears throat> everybody else to get breakthroughs. And while you've been doing all of that for them, how many of them have come back and said, this is what God did for me. I know it was because of your prayers. Here's what I want to give to you. I said, Lord, they've been blessing the ministry. He says, they didn't get it from the ministry. They got it from you. I said, okay. Pastor John Jenkins said to me, he said, um, Sturdivant, you know what your problem is? He says, your problem is that you are unbiblical. I'm like, how can you tell me I'm unbiblical? You know, I just called him and said, listen, if I've never done anything, I go, in the beginning of the year, I'll go through my apologizing season. People have yeah. ever said or done anything yeah. to you. Please, if I have, let me get that right. Yeah. And um, Pastor John Jenkins said to me, he said, no, man, everything is good with us, you know. And he made this statement. He made this statement. He said, you have perfected sowing, mm -hmm. but you have not learned how to receive. Mm -hmm. And I had to hear that. Mm -hmm. because I have not learned how to receive because I'm always concerned what is someone's motive? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. is their reason for wanting to give to me? And so I'm bringing you on tonight because you have to represent your home. Your family will never go any higher than what your faith is that you're believing God for. Mm -hmm. You, single mom, will never get your children to have faith above the level of your faith. Uh, okay. You, single dad, will never get your seed to have a level of faith beyond the level of faith that you have. Mm -hmm. Can I please tell you all something? That my wife and I are married. She is bone of my bone. She is flesh of my flesh. She is best. You is my woman now from poor and best. Mm -hmm. She's that person. But do you know that when we are fasting, 
that my wife has to come up with her own fast C mm -hmm. and I've got to come up with my own fast C mm -hmm. because I'm asking God for some things and she's asking God for some yeah, things. Yeah. I'm praying some things for my family side mm -hmm. and I'm praying for her family side. But guess what she's doing? She's praying for her family side mm -hmm. and she's praying for my family side. We were coming home just the other day and we were talking about um, our, um, our making wills and all of that kind of stuff like right, that. Right. And um, I said, you know, my father said something to me. He said that he told uh, Mommy Gio that um, when, he, when they were first getting started, he said, don't worry, my dear, everything I had is yours. And Mommy Gio said, you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. and so they laughed a little while about that. And so I was talking with co-pastor about, I said, I want to get this in order. I want to get that in order so that should anything happen to me, mm -hmm. I want to make sure that you're good mm -hmm. and that you're not operating from a mother perspective mm -hmm. because you're just, because they're your children, give everything away to everybody. Mm -hmm. She said, well, you do know I might die before you. Mm -hmm. And I'm just making sure that I've left everything for you mm -hmm. to hand it out. Mm -hmm. I said, baby, you don't have anything. She says, you don't know what I have. Mm -hmm. She says, I've got some stocks. I've done some things just like you have done some things. I have done some things, which means that you have got to have your own measure and level of faith for you. Amen. You've got to make your own decisions when it comes to fasting. Baby, I'm going to fast one day, but I'm going to eat the next day. You fast the day that I'm eating, right. and then I'll fast the day that you. Right. No! Uh, you have got to take the stand. If you want to be the first partaker, right. that's why this is for you on tonight. And I know that I've unleashed some stuff already before I've gotten into it, but mm -hmm. I hope that you are writing things down. You mm -hmm. are taking some notes because you have, you know, I, I saw, I think I saw my daughter come on here. My daughter is a grown woman, mm -hmm. but she's got to rely on her walk with God, yeah. her fast with God, yeah. her seed to God. She can't rely on mama and dad because she's grown. Yeah. And now that she has grown, she's had to put away childish things. Amen. And some of us still want to keep on having someone to carry us when they carry us, but we don't want to sew back into them when we get the stuff that came as a result of them carrying us. Mm -hmm. And so now we want to get into, by now everyone should have their packets. If you follow yeah. the instructions, mm -hmm. you should have your packets. And in your packets, there are five elements. Yes. There are five. scriptures, right. a bracelet, right. communion sacraments, right. oil, yes. and a handkerchief. Amen. Five is the number of grace. Yes. God is gracing us to do some things tonight Amen. as a result of the things that we have. Amen. I'll give a simple explanation for the symbolism of each of the elements, and then there will be a prayer arrow that will go with that, mm -hmm. and we will pray that prayer arrow together. This information will be on our um, website once mm -hmm. it's done, but please don't rely on that. Why don't you take your own copious notes and make sure mm -hmm. that you've got it because you'll understand it in your language when you write it. You may go back and hear the way that I'm saying it, but it will sound more genuine when you're hearing it in your tongue or your pen or your hand. Mm -hmm. And so, thank you so much, Samara. We're going to the first symbolism of the element that is in our bag, and that is the scriptures. Yes. All of you got in yours the scriptures. Yes. This is what um, you had, and these are actually the scriptures that we stated the siege was over in various areas of your life. And so we've made the scriptures be a preeminent thing. Now, some, Cole, will go through the entire fast, won't read the scripture, won't memorize the scripture, won't do anything that we said concerning the scriptures. You just kind of wing it. Take your own prayer. You know, Father, uh, I want the siege to be over. Uh, and, uh. But see, God does not honor that. He honors. Remember, you have got to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. You have to compete according 
to the rules. And the rules were you had to read the scripture, you had to memorize the scripture, mm -hmm. and the area that the siege was going to be over had to be based on a scripture, not just, oh God, I'd be so happy when this is over. I'd be glad. No, that's not it. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 23, that God would make a determined end. That's on your scriptures. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go back over these because you have them. But the reason why we have the scriptures is because, as it is on the screen, the scriptures is the elevation of God's word in our life. Mm -hmm. It helps to keep you and I, what, focused? Y'all, this on your screen, mm -hmm. and living a life of holiness. Ah. Based on Psalm 119, verses 9 through 11, go back and read it yourself. Psalm 119, verses um, 9 through 11, it was even in the fast. It says, how can a young man cleanse his ways and an unrighteous man his thoughts? It's by taking heed to the word of God. So the scriptures help me to stay clean and to be holy. Mm -hmm. Why do I have to do that? Because Psalm 138 verse 2, Psalm 138 verse 2 says this. It says that the almighty God has set his word above his name. I know everybody said, I just call the name of Jesus. I know the name of Jesus. It's just, all of that sounds good. But the Bible says, and I, I need you all to understand the power of the word. It says in Psalm 138, verse 2, I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. Here it is. For you have magnified your word above all your name. Listen, there's a lot of stuff that you can get in his name, but you can't get it in his name if you don't know the pin code, which is his word. Do you know that you can go to the bank and know that you have a certain amount of money in your account? You can put your card in, but if you forget your pin code and the reason why i know this is because i just can now i'm like babe what is my pin code i've got too many accounts and too many pin codes but the thing is if you have committed the word to your heart your word have i hidden in my heart that psalm 119 verse 11 says your word have i hidden in my heart that i will not sin against you yeah. And so it keeps us holy and focused. So lift your voice to the almighty God and pray this first prayer arrow. Say, Father, help me to always speak your word more than confessing my feelings, confessing my fears, or confessing my circumstances. You've got 30 seconds. Go on and pray that prayer. My Father and my God, help me to always confess your word. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. It's a light unto my pathway. Help me not to speak my emotions. Help me to speak not my circumstances. Help me not to speak what I'm dealing with, but help me to say what your word says. Because your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my pathway. I don't want to keep on doing what I've always done done and not getting any results. Let this night be the turning point where the siege ends and everything concerning my life in Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. One more time, so shall it be for me in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you receive that, shout a big hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Let me say this to you before I move on, that as you ingest, as you digest the word of God, yes, yes. then you will start speaking what he says and start getting what he got. Come on. If you say what the Lord says, yes. you will get what the Lord gets. Didn't he say in Genesis 1, and God said, let there be light. Yes, yes. And didn't light show up? Yes, yes. And didn't God speak and call everything into existence? Yes. And didn't it come into existence? Yes. You have got to speak what his word says, yes. not your emotions, not God, I got to have this by Friday. 
God, you know, they're going to evict me. Yeah. God, you know, I need a car. God, you know, I'm going through so much. Find the scripture Come on. that backs up your knee and pray the scripture and not just confess your pain. Amen. I'm giving you, um, write this scripture down. I'm not going to go over it, but it goes yes. under this same scriptures. Write this one down. Okay. Matthew 10, verse 16 through 20. Okay. Matthew 10, verse 16 okay. through 20. Yes. Matthew 10, verse 16 through 20. Uh -huh. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, mm -hmm. verse 13 and 14. Uh -huh. I want you to write them down for yourself. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, he says, I'm sending you out. I'm sending you out. I am sending you out in Matthew 10, verse 62. It says, I'm sending you out as sheep amongst wolves. He says, but well, here's what I need you to do. Uh -huh. He says, you're going to be brought before people and everything like that. But when you stand up, don't think what you're going to say because the Holy Spirit is going to tell you come on, come on. what you need to be saying. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit will tell you what you need to be saying. And the Holy Spirit is not going to be operating through your emotional realm. He's going to be operating through your spirit realm. Yes. But he can only bring back to remembrance whatever Jesus has told you. So if you have not ingested what Jesus says, then you cannot regurgitate what Jesus says. Okay. That same Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. Chapter 4, verses 13 and 14 of 2 Corinthians. Very powerful scripture. It says, we have the same spirit of faith mm -hmm. according to what is written. I believed and therefore I spoke. Therefore we also believe and we speak. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. Co-pastor, if mm -hmm. I doubt Mm -hmm. then that's what I believe mm -hmm. and that's what I'll speak. Right, right, right. If I believe, mm -hmm. then that's what I'll believe and that's what I speak. Okay. If I believe I'm sick, I'm going to keep confessing I'm sick. Mm -hmm. If I believe I've got name any illness, then I'm going to keep on talking that illness mm -hmm. more than I'm going to speak the word of God. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter that I know that by his stripes I'm healed. It doesn't matter that I know by his stripes I was healed. It doesn't matter that I know that the cattle on a thousand hill belong to him. If I am broke and that's what I believe more, listen, y'all. <laughs> it takes the same energy to have faith as it does to have fear. That's true. That is true. It takes the same energy to have faith as it does to have fear fear. Okay, so now that's why we do the scriptures. But now we have the bracelets. I've got mine on, mm -hmm. but take your bracelet out mm -hmm. and put it on your right wrist. I've already got mine on. I've been wearing it since they came in. Right, right. <laughs> I've been wearing them yes. since they came in. Right. Put your bracelet on your right wrist. Right. Why do I have you wear a bracelet every time we do a fast or a consecration? Uh -huh. And I know that many times, you know, we start out with the bracelet and then after a while we start saying, um, I took it off because it was uncomfortable. Uh -huh. Um, I took it off because the rubber irritated me. Yeah. Um, I took it off because it got in the way of my whatever. Yeah. That that's because you just see it as an ornament. Mm -hmm. You just see it as something that you just put on for a season. But the bracelet, you see it on you all screen, it serves as a memorial uh -huh. of God's promise to me, mm -hmm. as well as my place of preference in his kingdom. I say put it on, but where did I say put it? On your right. Right hand. Mm -hmm. Some will say, well, I prefer it on my left hand. But see, it serves as a memorial of God's promise to me, mm -hmm. as well as my place of preferential treatment or my place of preference in his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Look what it says in Exodus chapter number 13, verse 9. Exodus chapter number 13, mm -hmm. verse 9. Co-pastor, it reads this way. It shall be as a sign to you 
on your hand as a memorial between your eyes that the Lord's law may be in your mouth for with a strong hand, the Lord has brought you out of Egypt. Uh -huh. So the whole thing that he was saying is that uh, I'm giving you some laws. I'm giving you some things. I'm giving you something so that when you talk to your children, you talk to your future, you'll talk to your seed that you'll wind up saying to them that God did something with a strong hand and it will be a memorial on your hand, a mark on your hand. But Brother Sturdivant, Pastor Bamadelli, you said, put it on our right hand. Why can't we put it anywhere? Because in Matthew chapter 25, come on, Matthew chapter number 25, very powerful passage of scripture. I hope you'll go back and read them on your own. Matthew 25, and you're looking at verses now. Um, what is that called, Pastor? 32 through 34? What Here's what it says right now. Here's what it says. Uh -huh. um, all the nations will be gathered before him uh -huh. and he will separate them one from another uh -huh. as a shepherd, here it is, divides his sheep from the goats yes. and he will set the sheep on his right yes. hand, yes. but the goats on the left. Uh -huh. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Yes. It's the right hand that shows you've got preferential treatment, that you are going to inherit something, that the siege is over. You have to look at this bracelet, and every time you see it, you'll say, the siege is over. It doesn't yes. matter what my situation looks like. Yes. And if it rolls around to the other side, you can say, oh yeah, we'll let the recovery begin. Yes. It is a memorial. It is your strong right arm that does it. So now, beloveds, when we do that, uh -huh. wearing this bracelet, it reminds us that we are different. Yes. It reminds us that we are separate. Yes. Do you know that we have a lot of members in the ministry, but only a remnant did the fast and the consecration. Only a remnant sowed the seed. Only a remnant tuned in for the prayer. How will you know the difference? When we come back together again, guess what you're going to see? A remnant will have on a bracelet. Yes. And there will be a few more that do not. Because the Bible says in that Isaiah chapter 10, verse number 23 through 27, that God would make a determined end yes. in the siege. And even though there would be many that came out, only a remnant would get what God had for them. So now let's pray this next prayer arrow concerning this bracelet on our right hand. You're going to say, Father, because of my position in you, yes. help me to never say, here it is, uh -huh. that I am under anything but you. Yes, Lord. No more, well, I'm under the circumstances. Right. No more, I'm a little under the weather. Right. Because the siege is over. Yes. Not the siege is under, yes. the siege yes. is over. over. Yes. So I am never under anything. Lift your voice loud and clear to the Almighty God yes. and say, Father, yes. because of my position in you, oh, because of my position in you help me to help never me. say, that I am under anything, I'm under anything but, you. but you. I'm not under the weather. I'm not under, the I'm not under any circumstances. I'm, under, any circumstances. I'm under, God. under God. Indivisible. Indivisible. Go ahead. Pray that prayer out right now. You've got 30 seconds, my Father and my God. Oh, my Father, I have a special position in you. 
I've got preferential faith in you. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and never beneath. Oh my God, help me to never confess. I'm a little under the weather. I'm a little under the circumstances. Well, under the circumstances, I'm feeling this. Under the circumstances, I'm feeling that. Father, never a day, never a day. My speech will never speak under. I am only over. I am on with ever, back with never. I am above only and never beneath. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. I say one more time, so shall it be for you in Jesus' name mighty name we have prayed Amen. if you receive it shout a big hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 i am challenging everything about you amen i'm challenging your religiosity uh-huh i'm challenging how long you've been in church uh-huh i'm challenging your church titles yes i'm challenging you being a pastor being a minister, being Amen. an elder, being a deacon, being of whatever title you have had. Yes. I'm challenging all of that tonight because you can have the title and still not have any power. Wow. You can have the title and still walk in sickness and disease. Yeah. You can have the title and still act like you have no victory. Yes. You can add the title and still act like you're poor mouthing God, like yes. you don't have anything. Yes. But because of what we are learning tonight, Everything I've been trying to teach for the 30 something years that some of you all have been around me, you can no longer act like you don't know. Yeah. You can no longer say, well, this is just who I am. Yeah, it's who you are because it's who you've chosen to be. Mm -hmm. And you've given the devil a foothold and a stronghold in your life. Let's now go to this third area yeah. in our um, dealing with the elements and their symbolism. Mm -hmm. It is the communion elements yes, and please. each of you should have yours by now yes you've got your little packet with your bread on the top, on the top. and then you've got your juice in the bottom right i want you to get it and get it ready mm -hmm. because the bible tells us something concerning the communion sacraments right. and i want you to get this so that you'll understand the significance of them John chapter number six, verse 51 through 58. I'm not going to read all of it. John chapter number six, um, verses 51 through 58 on your reading. You can read all of it, but I'm going to pick up at verse number 53. Okay. Jesus said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man mm -hmm. and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Mm -hmm. Oh, pastor, unless we do communion on a regular basis, we are just existing but not living. Wow. He said, if you don't have my blood in you and my flesh in you, then you have no life. Mm -hmm. You are just existing. You are not alive. Here's what he says. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Eternal. And I will raise him up at the last day for my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed here it is in verse 56 he who eats my flesh mm -hmm. and drinks my blood abides in me here it is and i in him mm -hmm. he lives in me and i live in him uh -huh. every time i partake of this bread and this cup uh -huh. that's what he says in john 6 Verse 51 through 58, you read it. But then co it in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, right. verse 24 through 25. Would you all please do me a favor and go back and read these after I'm done? Uh -huh. Please, in Corinthians chapter number 11, mm -hmm. verses 24 and 25. 2 Corinthians 11, 24 and 25. It reads this way. And I, I, I love the word of God because it's always opening something up that I had not seen before. Okay. Here's what he says in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 24 and 25. He mm -hmm. says this. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's do 1 Corinthians. Is that on your paper? 1 Corinthians, yes, thank sir. you so much. 1 Corinthians, thank you so much. Let me give you all that. But 2 Corinthians is going in another direction. Um, and I don't have time to do that tonight. 1 Corinthians 11, 24 and 25, it says this. Um, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Yes. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So we already know we've got to eat his body. We've got to drink his blood in order for us to have life. Now, I don't want you to miss what I'm getting ready to give to you right now. That is very, very powerful in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. Somebody's going to now understand why they have been losing battles that they should have been winning. Somebody's getting ready to figure out right now why they're still walking and claiming sicknesses when they should be walking in health. Mm -hmm. Somebody's getting ready to figure out right now why you are still holding on to things that you should have been delivered from a long time ago. In 1 John chapter number four, verse 17, here's what it says. Love has been perfected among us in this. Co-pastor, does, does Jesus love us? Mm -hmm. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He so loved. Greater love has no man than this, Jesus says, that he lays down his life for his friend. That's love. So there's no question that he loves us. So here's what it says, Co. Love has been perfected among us in this, mm -hmm. that we may have boldness yeah. in the day of judgment. Here it is. Here's the scripture that I hold on to. Because as he is, so are we in this world. We never heard of Jesus having a migraine. We never heard of Jesus having hemorrhoids. We never heard of Jesus having asthma attacks. We never heard of Jesus having an addiction and saying, I can't break this. We never heard of Jesus saying, I feel like I've been hit by a Mack truck. We never heard of Jesus saying any of those things. And if his love is perfect in us, then that means that we are supposed to be doing, living the exact same way that he lived on planet Earth. I told you I'm messing everything up. I'm messing up everything you've learned in church. I'm messing up everything that you thought you got with your title. I'm messing up everything you thought you had because you spoke in tongues. I am telling you that there's got to be an evidence that takes place. And what the communion elements do is that they are having us acknowledge our oneness with him. It is establishing our covenant relationship with him. When I take this communion, I am saying I am one with you, oh God. I am saying that I am going to do what you did. The same life you lived on planet Earth, I'm going to live that life. The same way that you walked in authority, the same way you did what was impossible, the same way you reversed the irreversible, the same way you walked on water that other people struggled with. That means that I should be able to walk on what other people are drowning in. I should be able to walk in financial wealth while other people are drowning in debt. I have the ability if I apply what the word of God says to every area of my life. We, we read the book, we hear the sermons, but we don't apply what the principles are. But tonight, as we take this communion celebration, it is this communion that we are taking that is going to unify us with him. Yeah. It's going to give us a boldness with him. Yeah. It is going to position us. Here it is, you all. I'm setting you up. It's going to position us to operate in his name. I'm taking you somewhere. I said it's going to position us to do what? Operate in his name yeah. we're becoming one with him come on amos 3 3 how can two walk together except they be agreed this is now positioning us tonight to operate in his name come on take one hand put it on your own chest and say after tonight, after tonight everything jesus did everything jesus did while on planet earth, on planet earth. i can not only do that that. I, can do I can do greater than what he did, than what he did. Because, he so. because he said so jesus said greater yes. works than these will you do so if you're not doing greater than what he did you are being disobedient to his command 
You're supposed to be doing greater than what he did. Did he open blinded eyes? Yes. Did he heal the sick? Yes. Did he raise the dead? Yes. Did he find money in the mouth of a fish? Yes. Whatever he was able to do, you should be doing greater. Amen. I told you, I'm challenging everything about you. So right now, I want you to go ahead and get your communion elements together. Okay. And I want you to put the bread in your mouth. Let's get ready to do this now. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get mine out of here. I opened it up. Okay. You got it? And we're going to take this and we eat it together in the name of the Father. Amen. And in the name of the Son. Amen. And in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on, let us eat together now. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And in like manner, he took the cup. And he said, drink ye all of it. This is the New Testament in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Yes, Lord. We understand that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. Jesus. So we're going to drink this together. And we are washing out all of what has been our knowledge, but did not allow us to operate in his truth. Amen. We've been confessing facts, yes. but we've not been confessing his truth. Your sickness is a fact. Yeah. But by his stripes, you're healed is the truth. Mm -hmm. Now, are you going to keep on confessing the facts or confessing the truth? So we take this cup together yeah. and we drink it in the name of the Father mm -hmm. and of the Son mm -hmm. and of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Let us drink together. Now you're going to lift your voice to the Almighty God and you're going to pray this prayer that is on your screen. Mm -hmm. You're going to say, Father, mm -hmm. grace me to seek a covenant life and not merely a comfortable life. I want a covenant walk with God and not just a comfortable life. I don't just want my bills paid. I want to know that I've got, I've got cattle on a thousand hills that my father owns. I don't just want to have my be able to make it to the next paycheck. I want to be able to lend to nations. I want the covenant relationship and not just a comfortable life. Uh, Lift your voice. You've got 30 seconds. And say, Father, grace me to seek a covenant life and not just a comfortable life. Go ahead. You've got 30 seconds. My Father and my God. I'm not just trying to have my bills paid. I'm not just trying to make it so I can retire. I'm not just trying to have another car in the garage. I'm not just trying to fix up my house, fill up my wardrobe, be able to travel and eat at various restaurants. I want to be able to live a covenant life that you'll know that if you put it in my hand, I'll put it in the kingdom. If you put it in my hand, I'll put it in the kingdom. If you put it in my hand, I'll put it in the kingdom. And I decree it to be so from tonight by virtue of this community. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, you decree it with me. And Amen. so shall it be for me in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. Yeah. If you believe it, shout a real big hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. But well, now here is your oil. Yes. Your oil mm -hmm. came as a result of being mixed mm -hmm. with my oil mm -hmm. that I brought back from Nigeria. Uh -huh. My father and the Lord had this oil sitting on his altar. Yes. And he went out and laid hands on every bottle of oil. He poured the oil. If we were still in the building and we were watching the video, I would show you where he anointed me. Yeah. Because we would always stop the video at the place where he anointed me so you would know that you were getting the oil that came from his father to him and from him to me. Mm -hmm. So he laid all of those bottles out, laid hands on them, poured them in containers so that the millions of people could be anointed by the other ministers that were on the altar because he's 80 years old in just a few weeks. But those that were his special guests, he laid hands or mommy would lay hands on us, the special guests. Yeah. And then after it was over, guess what he did? Any extra bottles of oil, he would give them to me and I got two of them. He said, 
take them home because I know that you anoint your people yes. with them. So I mixed this oil with some oil that I had here from one of the previous times that he had given me a bottle. And that's what you have in your own. Yeah. So what is the purpose of the anointing oil? Co-pastor, mm -hmm. Acts chapter number 10, verse 38. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter number 10, verse 38 says this, how mm -hmm. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Why? For God was with him. He went about doing good and healing all, somebody say healing all. healing all, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. God anointed Jesus to do that. Well, what's that got to do with us, Brother Sturdivant? Well, look at Mark chapter number three, verses 13 through 15. Mark chapter number three, verses 13 through 15. Mark three, verses 13 through 15. It says this. And he, meaning Jesus, went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted, and they came to him. Then he appointed 12 that they might be with him, yes. <laughs> and that he might send them out to preach yes. and to have power to heal the. Listen, y'all. Mm -hmm. He sent them out to preach. Listen, all of you all, don't tell me you can't witness. You are anointed to share the good news. All preaching is, is telling good news. Yes, the gospel is just a word that means good news. Okay? So it says, co-pastor, that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. That's it. Now you all, this that's last it. one that's right here, it says in James chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, right. James 5, verses 14 and 15, you all have heard it, here it is. It says, is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him. Well, listen, do you have oil that I've given you? Yes. Are you taking this communion with me tonight? Yes. Are you wearing your bracelet? Yeah. Have you got your scriptures? Yeah. Then that means that if someone is sick, you have the authority to go and operate with your oil, ah. doing that which Jesus did and doing greater. Yeah. I'm about to mess you all up. I told you I'm going to mess up everything that you've got to do with what you thought you knew about church and about being saved. Here's what it says, co-pastor. It says, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. How? In the name of the Lord. Anointing him with what? Oil. How? In the name of the Lord. It says this in verse 15, co. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if you are sick, you will not continue to be sick because of the anointing oil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. If you go back and listen at what we read in the consecration in um, Isaiah chapter number 10, it says, and the burden shall be lifted, verses 23 through 27, and the yoke will be destroyed from around your neck because of the anointing oil. Mm. The Bible says in Psalm 133, it's good and pleasant for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the oil that was upon the head that ran down to the beard, even Aaron's beard, and came down to the skirts of his garment. I'm about to help somebody right now. When you anoint someone, co-pastor, they may say, my feet hurt, but you only have to anoint their head. That's right. They may say, my knees hurt, yeah. but you only have to anoint the head. Right. David said, he anoints my head with oil. Well, when Aaron got the oil poured on his head, what did that Psalm 133 say? It says it ran down to his beard, yes. into his garments, yes. down to the skirts of his garment. It ran from his head down to his toes. You don't have to anoint somebody's belly. You anoint the head. You don't have to, somebody's got hemorrhoids. You don't have to anoint their posterior. You anoint the head and it will cover every part of them. Are you all listening to me right now? I'm opening your eyes on some revelation of the scripture. We were doing some things out of ignorance. We laid hands on their back on everything, but the oil covered 
comes from the head and covers every other area. The Bible says in that Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says that um, uh, Jesus was anointed to deal with that. It says in Mark chapter number three, he called people with him to do that. Uh -huh. It said in James 5, 14 and 15 that um, anybody that's sick is anointed. If they've got the oil, you can do it with the oil and get it done. Okay. So beloveds, we are now going to have to understand, listen to this, that you must have faith not only in the one who has given you the authority, mm -hmm. co-pastor, you've got to have faith in your faith. Amen. I'm going to say that again. You've got to not just have faith in the one who is God through his son, Jesus Christ, who has given you the authority to operate in the anointing. You've got to have faith in your faith. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in James chapter one, verse six through eight, you can write it down. Mm -hmm. James one, verse six through eight, it says that whatever you are asking God for, you've got to believe it. Mm -hmm. It says, because if you don't believe it, you have become double-minded. Uh -huh. And a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Go, Pastor, you cannot get double-double if you're double-minded. Mm -hmm. You cannot keep waffling back and forth. Well, I know what he said, but I just feel so sick. I know what he said, but I just got so much going on. You don't understand what I'm dealing with. You don't understand what's happening with me. Lazarus died and was dead for four days mm -hmm. and buried. And yet Jesus was not intimidated by the death of his close friend. He still went and told him, you can get up. I'm getting to this next point and I'm gonna mess you up when we do this. Here it is right now with the oil. You are now going to have to use the anointing oil because the anointing oil allows you and I to operate, to move under the same anointing, the same authority as Jesus did. Mm -hmm. And I've given you the scriptures to go with it. I'm, I'm coming at you righteously indignant because I want to get this in you because I've told my wife, I've told anybody that will listen, and I'm going to share this with you in this next point that's coming up. You have got to be ready before you have to do it because at the time you have to do it, your emotions will tell you you can't. Ah, that's right. That's right. You've got to have this in you before you have to have it in you because when you have to have it in you, your emotions are going to tell you you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. Lift your voice right now to the Almighty God and pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, I no longer want to be just a recipient of a miracle. Tonight, use me to be a carrier of your power and perform miracles. Amen. Go ahead, pray that prayer, my Father and my God. I don't want to be the one that's always got to have a miracle. I don't want to be the one that's always got to call and say, Pastor, pray for me. Oh, Pastor, pray for me. Can somebody come lay hands on me? My Father and my God, I want to be the one that is a carrier of the anointing. I want to be a carrier of the power. I want to be a carrier of the presence and the power and the potency of my Redeemer so that whenever anything comes up, I am more than ready. I am prepared to handle the situation and I decree it to be so right now in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. And so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please take your oil right now. Uh -huh. Open it up. Okay. Get some on your hands. Mm -hmm. Put it in your right hand. Mm -hmm. Rub it together. Uh-huh. And put your right hand and your left hand on your head. Amen. Because we're getting double, double. anointed. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your voice to the Almighty God. Yes. And we're going to right now say that prayer one more time. Yes. 
Say, Father, I no longer want to be a recipient of the miracle from tonight with this anointing. Let me be a carrier of your power performing miracles everywhere I go. If you receive that, come on, say, I receive it. I receive it in Jesus' name. Go ahead, clap your hands and give God the praise. I receive this. I receive this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we come down to the end of it. Yes, Lord. Beloveds, get your handkerchief. The handkerchief that I'm holding in my hand is the handkerchief that I place all of you all's handkerchiefs in. Amen. Because the oil that was on my father's hands, yes. my mother's hands, yes. that they put upon my head, yes. rather than to just soak it up and say, oh God, this is me, this is me, this is me, I took the handkerchief and placed it on my head and got all of that oil that was on my head. I pressed it on. And then what I did was I took that handkerchief mm -hmm. and wrapped it inside of two handkerchiefs uh -huh. because I knew God was going to be doing double-double yes. this year. Yes. So that by the time I placed this handkerchief around each handkerchief that you had, it already had a double portion anointing Amen. on it. You, you already have a double portion anointing on your cloth in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, co-pastor, I want to say this before I do this last part of this prayer, because the question now is, why the handkerchief? Why the handkerchief? Because see, the handkerchief, read it on your screen, this is the tangible manifestation of the presence and power of Christ. Mm -hmm. Listen, you all, it's the tangible manifestation. Mm -hmm. I can handle this mm -hmm. of the presence and power of Christ's anointing in your life and in my life. Mm -hmm. Can I please tell someone that's listening to me, contrary to what you may or may not have been told, Jesus's last name is not Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ means Jesus the anointed one and his anointing. The word Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. So whenever you are saying Christ, you are saying the anointed one yes. and his anointing. Yes. Um, Mary was told you'll call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. Yes. Didn't say you're gonna call him Jesus Christ. Yes, Christ. Christ came along after he was anointed. Uh, so the name Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. When you have this handkerchief, it is announcing your arrival. I don't want you all to get scared now, but this handkerchief in your hand announces your arrival for demons to decide whether they're going to stay to deal with you or whether they're going to run while they have a chance. Mm -hmm. I said the handkerchief symbolizes I am bringing the anointing of Christ with me. And if you know anything about Christ, demons are scared of him. Uh -huh. Look at Acts chapter number 19, mm -hmm. verse 11 through 17. We're rounding up. Acts chapter number 19, verses 11 through 17. It says this, now God worked unusual miracles. What kind of miracles? Unusual. Didn't about three weeks ago I preached, this is your unseasoned. Go back and check your notes. This is the time for unusual events, unusual miracles. God wrought unusual miracles by the hands of Paul yes. so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body, whatever was on his body. That's why I took the handkerchief and laid it on top of my head and soaked up the oil that was placed on my head by my father. So the, uh, the anointing of Pa Josiah, I can die on me, 
that was given to my father, uh, Pastor E.A. Adeboye, and then he laid his hands on Mummy Geo, and then Mummy Geo laid her hands on my hand. Then I took that oil and brought it back for you all. So now you have not one, not two, not three, but the transference of four anointings of those that are greater. Oh my God. Pa Josiah, Daddy Geo, Mummy Geo, and myself. Double, double. Yeah. anointings in your claw so that you now walk under a different authority. Even if you don't think you've got it, you don't have to think you've got it. You know what you've got because of the cloth that you have. Yeah. It says in Acts chapter number 19, it says in verse number 12, even handkerchiefs, come on, you got your handkerchief? Yeah. Even handkerchiefs were brought from his body. Watch this go, Pastor. It says to the sick and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Verse 13, then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you, not exorcise, like at the gym, but we exorcise, or we call you out by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. That's why I told you, you cannot rely on somebody else's fast for you. You cannot rely on somebody else doing it for you. You can't rely on somebody else's sewing for you. You cannot say, well, I'm um, so-and-so is praying for me. You've got to have your own. Remember, you have to compete according to the rules. Here were some preachers that were exorcists that engaged in exorcisms and decided we're going to do what we have seen others do, but they did not go by the rules. I want you all to hear this. And the Bible says, also there were seven sons of Siva, verse 14, a Jewish chief priest who did so. Watch this. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. Now here was a man that was possessed cult with seven, and there were seven sons of Siva, a Jewish priest mm -hmm. who did so. Right, right, right. Here is a priest mm -hmm. who had children, mm -hmm. seven sons that were possessed with demons, right, right. which means that just because you are the child of a pastor or a preacher or an evangelist does not mean that you are off limits to the demonic. Just because you've got a grandfather, I'm a third generation Christian. Just because you come from a family of people that have attended church does not mean that the devil recognizes you. He may recognize your family, but does not recognize you. He may recognize your father, but does not recognize you. He doesn't care about your title. He doesn't care about your hook of Messiah. He doesn't care about how big your Samsonite Bible is. He doesn't care about how big the cross is you wear. He doesn't care about nothing else. Look at what he says. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you? And then the man in whom the spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Please understand that it takes more than your type. It takes more than you be, well, I'm basically a good person. It takes more than I don't hurt nobody. It takes you having some authority. Go, Pastor, I conclude with this before we pray this next prayer. Because the Bible says in Mark chapter number one, mm -hmm. verse 34, Mark one, verse 34. Yes, I'm right. laying heavy on this one, guys. Mark one, verse 34. I want you to get this. The Bible says, the Bible says, let's start at verse 32. Okay. At evening when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick, all who were what, called. And all those who were demonic possessed, all that were what? And the whole city, listen, you can get your whole city turned around. It says, and the whole city was gathered at the door, verse 34. And then he healed many who were sick with various diseases, and he cast out many demons, 
and he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Wow. Come on, y'all. I want y'all to get this. And Luke chapter 4, verse 41. Luke chapter 4, verse 41. I want you to hold on to this. I'm trying to prepare you for something. I'm going to hit you with something in just a second. Luke 4, verse 41. It says, and demons also came out of many crying and saying, you are the Christ, the son of God. And he rebuking them did not allow them to speak for they knew that he was the Christ. Yeah. I want to tell some that are listening to me, you've just joined the ministry recently. We used to have deliverance services that took place in our own facility and the demons would talk to us. Yeah. We would be back there getting the demons out of these people and the demons would talk to us and they would tell us we're not leaving. We are not coming out. We've even had some of the people that were being delivered that they would denounce certain demons and there would they didn't want to release some, they would say, no, pastor, I want to keep this devil. And so they have kept certain demons because they didn't want to be delivered. I was preaching on Halloween night at a service over in Northeast. There are a couple of people that are on here that remember, I don't know, right around the corner from Gallaudet. And there was a young man that was pacing back and forth in the back of the church. He had an Afro at the time. And I was ministering and God told me, you've got to get him free tonight. Okay. I did my sermon, gave a basic altar call and then invited people to come to the altar. Lane Jameson, she was there. And um, I called for an altar call and wouldn't you know it, nobody came to the altar but this one young man. And when this one young Young man came up to the altar. He came to the altar, and just as I came off of the pulpit to pray for him, the young man hit the floor. When he hit the floor, the floor was hard marble. I only had one brother and a few sisters with me, and um, um, Lane Davidson was there. Um, I think I had Leslie Davis. Um, I, I had um, um, Fuller was there with me, and one other young lady, and they were holding his feet and his arms because he was so violent. At one point, he started banging his head on a con on that hard marble floor. And the brother that was with me reached up to grab one of the cushions off of the seat in the church because he didn't want him to hurt his head. When he let the young man's hand go, the young man grabbed me by my throat and my tie pulled my face down to him. His hair went backwards. His nose grew like an animal. And he said, do you think I'm letting him go on my night? And that was on Halloween night. Right. Co-pastor will remember, and some of the other ones will remember, that we were away at the 4-H Center doing a men's and women's retreat. And while we were getting people delivered in a room in a circle, we watched the spirit jump from one member to another member. And each member that the demon jumped on started acting and conducting themselves in demonic ways. Why? Because you can't play with the demonic. You cannot play with this. You can't hope this is going to work. You've got to know it in yourself before it happens. We are a ministry of healing, deliverance, restoration, and reconciliation. Yeah. And deliverance is a part of our name. It's in our DNA. And I'm going to say this now, and we're going to close out with this last prayer. Co-pastor, the truth of the matter is, um, did Jesus heal? Yes. Did he say we could heal? Yes. Okay. Did Jesus raise the dead? Yes. Did he say we could raise the dead? Yes. Did Jesus heal the sick? Yes. Did he say we could heal the sick? Yes. Did he say greater works than these could we do? Yes, we okay. Well, if he said that, then that means he expects us to do that. That's right. But you will not do it to any degree if you don't believe it yourself. Amen. Um, um, I will remember, and co-pastor may remember this, uh, Janice is on here, she may remember it. Years, years, years ago, when, when my children were very, very young, um, I used to be, and I'm gonna use the word, I was addicted to Afrin nasal spray. Mm -hmm. um, I was singing all of the time, I was preaching and I was traveling and I always had a stuffy throat, mm -hmm. a stuffy nose, head stuffy, something like that. And what I would always go and get the family size mm -hmm. bottle of Afrin, white container with kind of like a purplish mm -hmm. raspberry top and raspberry purplish writing on yeah, there. Yeah. And I would get the big one. 
It was the family size, but I was using it for myself uh -huh. to the point that even when I was not stuffy, mm -hmm. I would act like I was stuffy because of the high that the Afrin gave me. Uh -huh. Well, here's what I did. I started not only using it, but when my wife got stuffy, I would give it to her. Mm -hmm. And when my children got stuffy, I would give it to them. And guess what wound up happening? Suddenly my wife and my children were now using what I was using, but don't miss it. But they started having other ailments that required other medicines when before they never used to take any medicines. Mm -hmm. But because I, as the priest, introduced Afrin into the family equation, it then opened the door for them to now look for medicines to try to take care of what the Lord said he would do. I told my wife, I decided I'm not gonna take Afrin no more. Right, right. And she remembered, I would have to sit up in the bed every night and I'm like. Oh. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can't sleep, can't breathe. Mm -hmm. And the devil came to me and told me, I am going to suffocate you and kill you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You need to get that stuff back. Day one, day two. Mm -hmm. And I had to do this for seven days and nights. On the seventh day, sounds like naming a little yes, bit. On the seventh right. day, sounds like the walls of Jericho. Right. Yeah. On the seventh day, it broke. Right. And I never needed Afrin again. Guess what happened though? Mm -hmm. I would be over in Africa. Uh, I would get stuffy at certain points. I called Copas one time. I said, I can't breathe. Mm -hmm. The devil's trying to kill me. Mm -hmm. Why? Because just acknowledging it and getting delivered once does not mean he's not going to come back again. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, mm -hmm. he walks through dry places seeking rest. He wants to see, have you dropped your guard? Mm -hmm. Have you relaxed? Are you going to put everything on what you've always put it on? Whether you say your breathing disorder, whether you say I come from a family of people that um, had um, allergies to this, or they, every time I go to the hospital or go to my doctor, I just went this week, they said, what are you allergic to? I say, my mother said penicillin, but you can scratch that off. Well, we don't want to take any chances. My mother told me that when I was 11. Mm. I am now 64. Mm. And they still keep on my record Penicillin is what he's allergic to. So I have to ignore doctors and stand on the word of God, no matter what they say. The doctor just told me last now, you're going to die. You, you, when you get like this, you, you can die. I've seen too many people die. I said, Doc, I ain't dying. Mm -hmm. I came back and told Tess, told um, Copas, I said, but you tried to tell me I'm dying. I said, she's got to say, she's half my age telling me I'm going to die. Mm -hmm. I, you have got to have it in you because however you control the thing is how it's going to go over your family. So, sir, if you walk in weak faith, your sons and your daughters are going to walk in weak faith. Uh, Ma'am, if you walk in weak faith, then your, your um, sons and daughters, your grandchildren are going to walk in weak faith. Um, Ma'am, if uh, my doctors, if you have weak faith, then your patients are going to. How are you going to tell your patients, I, I hope the surgery will work? You've got to believe in the surgery before you do the surgery. Yeah, yeah. You've got to believe in your anointed cloth before you have to do it. I've said it to my wife. I've said it to my children. I've said it to anybody that would listen. Did the Bible say that Jesus said we're supposed to heal the sick? Did he say that? Mm -hmm. Did he say we're supposed to raise the dead? Mm -hmm. Did he say we're supposed to cast out devils? Yes. Okay. Well, if he said we're going to heal the sick and raise the dead and cast out devils, guess what that means? Right. Somebody's got to get sick. Ah. somebody's got to die and somebody's got to get demon possessed mm. who would you see quickest that gets sick that dies that gets demon possessed it's got to be somebody close to you ah. because you would not see a stranger get sick yeah. you would not see a stranger die you would not see a stranger get demon possessed it's going to be somebody close to you. And you are going to have to know that you've got authority to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons with somebody closest to you 
because that's going to be the first one that you would see. But you want to go even closer, Co? Who would I know that would get sick closer than you, my daughters, or my sons? It would be me. Ah. So I've got to be able yeah. to lay hands on my own self right. and declare my own healing. I've got to have the ability to put a cloth on my own self yeah. and declare my own healing. I've got to see the devil creeping up in my life and declare my own deliverance. Yeah. Even from, I call my wife mm -hmm. saying the devil's trying to kill me over here. Yeah. But I had to speak over my own life. When they said I had COVID, I had to speak over my own life. Not, well, the doctors won't do this and the right. doctor said this and what are you saying to yourself? Amen. You've got to have the authority. Amen. And so in order for it to be you healing somebody that's going to get sick, don't all of a sudden start saying, did y'all rush into the hospital? I put it on my page today, Co-Pastor. I don't know if you saw it. I put it on my page today um, that there was a young man that was at the service where we were, one of the pastors that were there when I was there in Nigeria. The siege is over time. Uh -huh. And he got his handkerchief and got his boy. Uh -huh. He was on his way home the other day. And as he was on his way home, if you need to go follow me on my platform, it's on all of my Facebook pages. While he was on his way home, there was a mother and a father screaming, saying, he's gone, he's gone, he's passed on, he's gone, holding their child in their arms. And the man said, the man said, listen, Put him on the body of my God. You know, the body is the hood. That's what you know what I'm saying? The boot is the back part. The body is the hood. So put him on the body of my car. He said, no, we're going to rush you to the hospital. He said, don't go. He won't make it. Put him on the body of my car. And what he did was he took the oil that he had and poured some of the oil in the little man's mouth. Okay. And then he took the handkerchief that he had from the siege is over and placed it on the little man himself. And then he went into intense prayer for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, suddenly the boy called, opened his eyes, and sat up. I'm telling you, you've been on the camp. You have seen that you cannot get off that camp in 20 minutes. You cannot get off that camp and get to the hospital in 20 minutes. But when the parents saw their child die, then their emotions would not let them use their own voice. Their emotions would not let them use their own handkerchief. You have got to have it in you because if somebody's going to die that you're going to have to resurrect, it's going to be somebody close to you. If somebody's going to be sick, instead of rushing them to the hospital, pumping them with drugs, where's your authority and your anointing? That's why you've got your oil. That's why you've got your call. That's why we have to do the fast. And that's why God said, sacrifice and do something different because he wanted to release something different for you. So this handkerchief, it is the tangible manifestation of the presence and the power of Christ and his anointing in your life and my life. It lets demons know that I'm on my way. If you want to escape without being torn up, you better leave before I get here with this handkerchief. I'm going to give you all another video to watch in this upcoming week. And please, you all, Watch the videos. I know that you don't, but please, going forward, watch the videos because the devil is going to tempt you on what he knows I have taught you. And God is going to test you on what he knows I have taught you. And you're going to either pass the test or fall into temptation because you do not play according to the rules. Please take your own handkerchief and put it on your own head. You just now anointed yourself with oil. Now put the handkerchief on your head. Lay your hands upon the handkerchief upon your head and say, Father, Father, make me a terror. To all of the demons, to all that are diseased, and everybody that's in darkness. One more time, Father, make me a terror to every demon, to every disease, and to every force of darkness. Go ahead now, pray that prayer, Father, my Father and my God. 
at the time and I got the phone call to come up to the hospital because they wanted me to do the last rites for him. Mm -hmm. And what wound up happening was I got up there and I didn't do the last rites. You all have heard me tell the story over and over again. Mm -hmm. The Lord allowed me to do a resurrection. Mm -hmm. I put everybody out of the room that was doubting. I put everyone out of the room and the Lord raised them up and you all have heard and have seen. He came back the following week and he came into the church and we saw him and he got his resurrection and his healing. Mm -hmm. Only problem was he did not continue to do what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And as a result, he passed on again. Mm -hmm. It is very important that you understand that the Bible says with Jairus' daughter, mm -hmm. Jesus resurrected Jairus' daughter from the dead, but then he said, give her something to eat. Otherwise, she would have died again because they did not keep doing what they had done. Now, I prayed for that young man and the Lord raised him up. You all remember when his brother drove us up to Jersey, brought us back, was taking the vans back, and then died in the vans. Mm -hmm. You all remember that? Mm -hmm. And um, I got a call from the family and I said to them, do not let them move him out of the room. Yeah. I'm on my way. Mm -hmm. I just want to pray with him to see what God's going to do. Because I told co-pastor, he doesn't have to be dead now. Mm -hmm. I said the same thing about several of our members. I said, they were not supposed to die right now. The problem is when I got into the hospital, I said, what room is he is? They said, well, they took him down. I said, why did you all do that? Here's what they said to me. Pastor, I don't know. I was just crying so much. I just told him, do whatever you have to do. Mm -hmm but you watched what God did with your other brother. Why couldn't you believe with this one? And it is because we get so emotional and we then think that somebody's not caring because they're not falling into the emotions that we're falling into. Everybody sits around in the room waiting for someone to die. Instead of going in and commanding death to lead and commanding that their bodies would be healed. And we just go in and say, well, you know, if they want to go, they can go. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you now, because we're now seeing that people close to us are leaving off of the scene yeah. quicker yeah. than any other time. I'm sharing this with you because you are being commanded by the almighty God they may have to die at some point, but who said it had to be today? That's right. That's they right. may have to die from something, but who had to say they had to die from this? Mm -hmm. Don't allow, no matter how severe it is, mm -hmm. to make you think that has to be the end. Amen. We had a young man in Nigeria that was sitting in a car. He was, a, um, he's, uh, he was driving to do evangelizing and witnessing and everything like that. And somebody pulled up to the side of the car and shot into the car several times and not a single bullet hit him. Mm. Another young man, I think Copas might have been there when he testified that he had been shot at six times and each bullet came and hit him. He bought the shirt and the jacket that he was wearing, held them up and had the holes through it where the bullets went in, but never hit him. Mm. Cover your family and not just be emotional, feeling sad when it's past. I've told co-pastor, mm -hmm. if she ever finds me not alive, mm -hmm. do not call morticians, 
Do not call the doctors. Do not call the EMTs. Call a couple of my spiritual children. I've given her the name of. They will pray for me. And while they're praying, call my father. Mm -hmm. And then whatever he says, that will be the final say. I don't need emotions. I need somebody that believes in the power of God. Mm -hmm. And I right now want to reach my cloth towards each of you. Mm -hmm. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, put it towards your screen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Father, for every person that is right now holding up their handkerchief, yes, Lord. their cloth towards mine, mm -hmm. the same anointing that came from my grandfather in the Lord, yes, Lord. that came from my father in the Lord, yes, Lord, that came from my mother in the Lord, I now add my oil with theirs mm -hmm. and I reach this towards them. And as it touches the screen mm -hmm. and theirs touches the screen, yes, let that same anointing, now that they have heard mm -hmm. why I gave them the handkerchief, mm -hmm. now that they have heard why I gave them the oil, mm -hmm. now that they have heard why we had the sacraments, yeah. now that they have heard why we have the bracelet on, yeah. now that they have heard while we use the scriptures. Yes. Father, let it become a reality to them. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We were in Nigeria. Amen. And, um, you know, over there, kidnapping is just business. It is. Right. People get kidnapped. Mm -hmm. We've heard testimonies of people that were released from the kidnappers. Mm -hmm. One young lady had gone and stepped onto the wrong bus. And when she got on the wrong bus, they then took her into the bush. When they took her into the bush, the jungle, they took her off of the roads into the jungle with several other people that were in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And when they got into the bush, they did every kind of thing because there were witch doctors and a lot of things that were done. And so she was standing in line and there was one man that had his head cut off right in front of her. Mm -hmm. There was a pregnant woman that was just before her. They killed the pregnant woman, cut open her stomach, took out the baby, put the baby in a mortar, which is a bowl with a hard um, concrete spoon, crushed the baby, grounded the baby into a liquid, and then drank it in the name of their God. Mm. when they got to this woman the, the doctor the chief person told the individual where did this one come from and they said we picked her up like we picked up the rest of them and so they got ready to kill her she started speaking in tongues lifted her hands up and said I'm a child of Adeboye I'm a child of Adeboye I'm a child of Adeboye she had on her wrist a bracelet, a simple rubber bracelet that had the dove coming down on it from the redeemed Christian church of God. Mm -hmm. And the witch doctor backed up and said, where did you get this one from? And they told him, we got her from over there in front of redemption camp. He then said, are you trying to get me in trouble with God? Take her back. They took her out to the road and let her go. Mm -hmm because of a simple bracelet that she was wearing. I'm talking to someone right now. If you love yourself, keep the bracelet on. Mm -hmm. Be prepared to use your handkerchief. Mm -hmm. Be prepared to operate in the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to say anything before I go off, Co-Pastor? Yes. Um, Pastor, tonight was just really, really good. It, it is now having us ready for the recovery to begin. So this had to happen. You had to do this before the, start, the end of this month. Absolutely. So that we would be in a place where we could start our recovery. Absolutely. Our seeds, knowing that our seeds are so Absolutely. So I, had to have, we couldn't go into another month. We had to, and we had to do it while we were still in the mindset of the fast. Right. Had, you know, before we went all the way back out of it. Yeah. Again, can I please thank Samara? Thank you so much. Hey, you all, listen. This is not, I wrote this down on my paper, called Pastor. Yes. This is not magic. It's faith. Yeah. The Bible says in Matthew 9, 27 through 29, 
Matthew 9, 27 through 29. And if you're going to pray for someone that is sick or whatever, make sure you know that they're saved. Give them a simple prayer. Because see, when a person is sick and about to die, it don't take a whole lot of preachers. Like, do you accept Jesus as your Savior? Yes. You wanted to come into your heart? Yes. Okay. The sin factor is out of the way. Let's now get you healed. Mm -hmm. You've got to make sure that they are candidates for salvation and that there's nothing stopping them from being healed. I encourage everyone, if you get ready, yeah. as sure as you have heard this tonight, yeah. you'll get news about somebody being sick. Yeah. You'll get news about somebody having COVID. Yeah. You'll get news about somebody passing. Mm -hmm. And you cannot let your emotions govern you. All you have to do is just say, I, I just want to be able to get over there to them to pray for. Mm -hmm. Can you get the phone next to their ear? I want to pray for them. And when you do that, just put the handkerchief in your hand and put the phone inside of the handkerchief and then talk to them, telling them that demons have to leave. Mm -hmm. You have authority. And if you'll use it, we can make an impact in the kingdom of darkness. We can empty hell and fill up heaven. Thank you so much, Samara. Thank you, Janice, for making this happen for us all the time, getting this information to Samara. And thank you so much, Nikita for always doing a wonderful job making this happen. It was long tonight. I pray that it was worth it for you tonight. Thank you all of you who fasted with me on tonight. I'll be praying for you after I get off of this line before I conclude my fast. I love you. I appreciate you. Walk in the authority. In the, authority. the Bible says, stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free. Mm -hmm. And do no longer be entangled in the yoke of bondage. Mm -hmm. Until Wednesday, prepare yourself Wednesday, for that communion, which is for everyone, but I assure you, it's not going to be like this. You got something special. Now operate it. It is my prayer in Jesus' name. I love you. God bless you.